rematch. One best of three for the semi-finals of DreamHack Regional Finals here this weekend. Vortex coming from a lower, uh, from a winner bracket final defeat against Happy X Lord. What did he learn in 24 hours is the question. Both amazing players, two of the best undeads in the world, in the region. Xlord, of course, we know him from Twitter, from the streams. He's a little bit of a troll, but I gotta admit, even if it hurts me a little, he's pretty damn smart and he learns really damn fast. So, Remo, you're one of his best friends in the scene. What is the takeaway from the winner bracket final? What is Xlord's game plan? Well, he tried to telegraph some things earlier, right? Todd just mentioned it a moment ago. It seemed like Xlord was trying to tell the world that he was going to play the same style again. Honestly, I felt like the first two games in the upper bracket looked really rough. It looked like Vortex was playing a really, really good game and Exo didn't make big mistakes. Maybe playing DK isn't the solution the way that Exo thought it would be. And guess what we see? It's a Crypt Lord mirror. Crypt Lord on both sides, big bad Papa Roach is back for both these players, which especially on this map is understandable, I would say. It's such an easy green into Expo creep. You can try to go for the Lightning Shield, but if you don't get it, it seems like you're kind of behind already. So at least for the first map, we're going to have a Crypt Lord again, which is the first time in quite some time that Exo is playing it in the mirror. And that is the first time ever that Xlord is playing the Crypt Lord versus Vortex in their three encounters. It was DK, 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 DK all the way, all the time. But yeah, Xlord changing up his game, and that's exactly what I mean. Like, you fool him once, but you surely won't fool him twice. Absolutely fascinating. I love seeing these developments from players in real time, adjusting to opponents, adjusting to strategies, changing their mind, finding new solutions. Is that the new solution? Is that what he's going to be doing better? Honestly, Vortex has been playing Crypt Lord exclusively for really, really long. Oh, yeah, don't leave the item behind. Yeah. Even, if, even if it's just a ring, it's still a decent item, you know? <laughs> it's a little bit um, but Vortex has been playing Crypt Lord for so long, he has been in the trenches. He is so used to the style, whereas X Lord had to split his attention between different strategies. So one could argue that Vortex perhaps has the better practice and is uh, currently more warmed up with him, let's say. And what is this creep route, by the way, by Vortex? He's not expanding. He crept level 2 with the Toscars and is going on the aggressive right away. So not only Exlord changing things up, but also Vortex, who is, of course, a master in this. There's Impale ready for both of them. Who's going to get the big Magi? It's real important moments. See, Exlord a little bit too early. Did he get it? I think he did. Level two and a half here, but of course, a lot of mana invested, but with great reward. Dependent of energy, a wonderful item for the rest of the game. Yeah, especially that game is going to be really nice. But right now, he found it with low mana, so it didn't really give him much mana. He got, like, maybe... 10, 15 mana out of that item. But he's going for the surround. He's going to get the Crypt Lord as well. Who needs an Impale to surround when he can just vanilla surround? And he gets the Crypt Lord here, going to force the team. He uses the big healing potion, trying to get out. If he doesn't get out, there's going to be a massive waste for Vortex. The Spaniard, can he wiggle his way out of there? The slimy bug that he is, cannot do it. Has to TP out last second on only 40 HP. So this is not only going to cost a big healing potion, also the Ritual Dagger. And that was the first misstep we've seen from Vortex against Exlord here in this tournament. And what a statement, right? Think back to Last Refuge, the first map of their first series, where Vortex surrounded the Fiend and then surrounded uh, three units at the same time. This is a little bit of a statement by Exlord that says, okay, man, if I have the beetles and I have ghouls, I can do pretty much the same. An amazing opening to this series, I would think. Both of these, of course, didn't have to go through the last chance qualifier. They did very, very well in the EPT points. Both would have been qualified for a potential Katowice event as well in fourth and fifth place, actually. But I, what I wanted to say before is Vortex in Crypt Lord matches versus Happy. We both definitely remember this, Echo Isles especially from the DreamHack region. He knew almost exactly what to do, and it was this one moment of genius in Happy that decided the game. So I'm really curious if it goes late the game into the deep decision-making in this Crypt Lord matchup, will x -Lord still be able to shine? He definitely has the chops to do it, but we'll see if he does. Vortex did a lot of things right against Happy, but oftentimes also was over-aggressive, trying to push too much, trying to fight too much, not teching enough. We can 
I think all remember those games with the gargoyles, which were so wild, which turned out to be incorrect in the long run. Vortex threatened an expansion down there at the natural, but the Beatles are on the case. x was scouting, and no expansions, not yet anyways. We're teching up. Tier 2 has been reached. A little bit faster for Vortex. And he's straight on the way to Tier 3, because the wonderful counter to Ghouls and Beatles is obviously Destroyers, as nothing but can shoot up, and there's that. also this build. So Destroyers might be the way to go here, Dreamo. Are uh, we getting excited for Mass Destroyer, Mira? Oh god, I hope... <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it is definitely in the cards, though. Impale plus Nova is a crazy strong fiend killer. And, well, it's a very strong killer against pretty much everything outside of air units and magic immune units. And destroyers are air and magic immune. Isn't that wonderful? I'm thinking back to Czechia right now, the good old Undead Mirror days in Europe. We'll see if that is what we're moving towards. Normally, we see a lot of expansions, but so far haven't been allowed. At the beginning, Vortex didn't allow the expansion, and then in the mid-game, Exo didn't allow the expansion. Oh, wonderful Impale! He actually threads the needle perfectly and hits all five ghouls right there. It's just for the highlight reel. It's not actually any kills, but it looked nice. Indeed, he couldn't get a Players single kill off attack. of it, so no follow-up there for X-Lord, who continues to scout with the Beatles. It is, of course, damage done. He's, like, preparing his future prey for this. Uh, speaking of Northern Isles here, obviously the map can be split in half from upper left to bottom right, but then there's two unique spots in the middle, Merchant and Marketplace, and Undead Mirror is a very experienced, heavy matchup. You want the high levels... Uh, Heroes, you want the high-level spells, so who's gonna get it now? Who's going to take the risk? It seems like it's Axel, but Vortex is right around the corner. Wow. Axel looking confident now with his opponent right there. He's still gonna do it. Coiling the beetle. Those things are pretty tanky, it turns out. And there's no impale anymore. Ah, that's why. Didn't even realize. Very smart by Axel, realizing there's no impale on the enemy side. He's going for his own surround now, and that Cryptlord is stuck. DK arrives, trying to fight out, trying to use the coil by so many beetles, so much damage, trying to give an item over, but the invul potion, the impale perfectly timed, and the coil doesn't land in time enough to get that save. The Crypt Lord dies. Vortex has to go for the Tavern Revive here. He has to keep contesting the middle. Oh boy, yeah, that was super expensive. Split second, the coil was already in the air. But of course, it takes some time for the projectile to arrive, and that was just a tiny, tiny bit too late. DJ, That's it already! Oh boy! Excellent! Lesson learned, mission accomplished! And that is one map away from the semi-finals versus Hawk. Very good game there by Excellent. That looked on point, that looked stellar, that looked confident. And Vortex not looking as good as before in the upper bracket. Thinking back to those games uh, in the days prior, Against x -Lord, he is 2 0 him, stunned him, and looked really strong. We talked to him in the interview after, and he sounded so confident. You remember? That day, he was so confident. He destroyed x -Lord in the interview, said, you know what, I'm feeling really good right now. I've done it before. I've gotten happy really close. And in the next match, I'm feeling really good. I'm feeling this is going to be a 50-50 match. And what happened? He got destroyed by happy. It wasn't even close. It was no fun, at least not from Vortex's standpoint. I'm sort of worried that this chipped away at his confidence, chipped away at the level that he trusts his play, because that did not look, look like the same Vortex that Exo was facing before. Yeah, I'm curious though, this was an interesting creep route, we pointed that out early, very aggressive, so how much of this map boils down to only this one move in the early game, because that's an easy thing to fix. Um, yeah, it was definitely a weird choice. Like. That creep route actually wasn't bad. He got level 2 and he attacked and he cancelled the expansion. It was the over extension into the main that was the problem. It was the bad Crypt Lord movement to get surrounded in the first place without getting impaled. And secondly, the bad choice to use the potion after that makes me question what Vortex's shape is today. Of course, that is just one or two uh, sequences or uh, things in sequence that happened there, but if you're on top of your game, if you're feeling the groove of the match, if you're at 100%, are you gonna make those mistakes? Are you gonna have those errors? Maybe yes, maybe no. At the end of the day, it's still just one map. I don't wanna, you know, doom Vortex here as if he doesn't have a chance, but 
I really do feel that he looked way more confident and stronger in the previous matches. Yeah, but we can say about Vortex that he's a fighter, the Matador. When he had these best of five series against Happy, he oftentimes lost the first one as well and then got back to back wins and put himself in a wonderful position. This is, of course, only a best of three, so winning the uh, two back to back maps would mean the semi final for him is definitely capable of doing severe damage to X or maybe the starting map not being uh, last refuge change something northern isles maybe something that x -Lord felt pretty confident on next map is going to be concealed hill yeah and that's going to be an interesting story now now x -Lord has said multiple times that he doesn't think lich is good and he's also said he doesn't want to play crypt lord now he just played crypt lord is he going to play lich now next i think crypt lord and northern isles very understandable super good crypt lord map because the creep route the critters and so on it lands up very nicely on concealed an aggressive Lich can be very good because the Crypt Lord on the other side will be creeping a lot, will be taking damage, and that Lich can put a ton of pressure on the enemy Crypt Lord. Is Exile going to bust out the Lich now? That would be the ultimate mind game, although it doesn't seem like he has a lot of practice with it, so doing it would be bold. Vortex against the ropes after a wonderful uh, winner bracket semi-final and a horrible winner bracket final. The trend continues, Remo, and he is up against the ropes now, facing elimination just one map away from being out. And Axlord, for him it's the other way around. He was uh, shook by Vortex in the first map of the series, the first match of the, of the tournament, but since then... Things are only going up for him. He was warming up against Wild a little, was threatened. We saw him breathing quite heavily there at the end of the game. But now it seems to be a very, very different X-Lord and this is what we want. This is what we need if uh, we want to see an X-Lord in the semis. Map number two, match points. If X-Lord wins this, he's up against Hawk in the semi-final. If Vortex wins this, we obviously go to a deciding map three. And his first hero time, both with the ghoul build. And he actually does it. He actually busts out the Lich Whoa. on the good Lich map. Whoa, okay, Vortex. What did you learn from yesterday? And does he expect it? I don't think so. He might expect a DK. He might expect another Crypt Lord mirror. But seeing the Lich here now, he's scouting early. Yeah, that's really good. You have to do that against x -Lord. He's got so many different styles. This is a good Lich map. AZ is a good Lich map. LR is a good Lich map. And Concealed Hill is a good Lich map. What makes a good Lich map is difficulty for the Crypt Lord creeping safely, him taking damage, and the Lich being able to apply pressure right away. You could also argue that TM is good, but that's not relevant here. Lich is going to be scouted. Aklad's probably going to die right away. Now, what Vortex didn't do well against Happy, in my opinion, is he was too greedy with the expo attempts. Juan before noted as well that perhaps you should just expand oh, please, against uh, a Lich. Uh, not expand, excuse me, against Lich, but rather attack. But also what he did is he took way too much damage from the creeps. If you're playing Crypt Lord against Lich, you want to take zero damage from the creeps so that you cannot get bullied with the Nova and right click so much. And again, we can see it, Vortex is taking a lot of damage from the creeps, which is not what you're supposed to do. Gloves of haste for him, not the ideal item of course as well against the Lich. You might even want to rain to escape the chip damage or to reduce the chip damage. We'll see. X-Lord ultra aggressive. This might be a quick series here once again. Nova, Ghouls onto the Crypt Lord and this is so much damage. The Ghoul is blocking, but what's that? The next Nova could just kill him right away. He's trapped there. Level 2, level up saves him for a bit at least. Nova was used already. Dangerous, dangerous moments for Vortex. 25 seconds into the next Nova for the Lich. Vortex knows this timing as well. He has to go for the Ritual Dagger. The Ghouls, for that reason, following the Crypt Lord. Not allowing him, not wanting to allow him to heal up for free. Also, threatening a surround on the Lich. Both players have to be very careful with their first hero movement. In the meantime, Skeletons in the back taking out a few Acolytes. Vortex, is he really going to try to go through with this expansion? Players with a Crypt Lord so back. low, it doesn't seem like it's doable. It seems like he will have to tech here now. Lich with the boots, that would be fantastic. Still doesn't get anything. A little bit of shop delay, maybe. Exelot trying to do things a little too fast. Oh, with the staff. Might even be better. And yeah, we thought he can get out of surrounds, and he's going to wake up the creeps here as well. The Crypt Lord is staying in the back, but uh, he's going to evacuate now. 
And here it is. Here's the tech by Vortex. And this is going to be interesting now. As I said, say it before by Juan, um, he said, well, yeah, Lich can work out in the beginning, especially against a fast expanding Cryptoid. But if the Cryptoid just techs, then the Lich can suddenly find himself in real trouble. And we're going to see if that's going to happen. Exot leaves one ghoul at the fountain to always wake up these creeps. Very nicely done by the German. Yeah, uh, fountains on the map are nice, but if the creeps are up alive and awake, then it's not uh, such a wonderful thing. I wouldn't bath next to Ogre Magi or Drake either. But this is really interesting, as you said, Vortex wasn't able to survive the tier 1 pressure against Happy. Now against x -Lord he does. And this is still an unusual matchup for him. Whoa, using an Impale here, he had full mana, so it's kind of fun. Uh, what are you, how is this matchup be played, Lich versus Crypt Lord? in the late game stages. I have seen this before. Oh no, I haven't seen this too often before. I was thinking about a Dreadlord Crypt Lord game, but not like this. I think it was, I don't remember which stream hack, but maybe the winter, one of them, Happy played against Vortex a and forces are I think attack. it was Concealed Hill, but there were so many games, I'm not sure. Anyways, the idea is usually the Crypt Lord levels a lot faster than the Lich. With the Beatles, you creep up so fast. But look, he surrounds the Crypt Lord in there. Are you serious? X Lord playing out of his mind, forces the TP. The ghoul goes down, yeah. But X Lord keeps these fountains in check if he now gets the kill on the Crypt Lord. This is one of the craziest early games we've ever seen. This presence of mind by X Lord is extraordinary. What an RTS talent this is. Having the ghoul bottom right, having the ghoul upper left. No bad for the Crypt Lord here today. Vortex is creeping. He needs levels. He needs level three desperately. He's going for another ritual deck. But the Lich, he might just be able to steal it. He's full mana and he gets it. Super close to two now. Talisman is being destroyed by X Lord. So the Crypt Lord can't. Oh, last second. Oh my God. Items have HP, but here's a block by the skeleton. Next Nova slows the Crypt Lord down, but still Oof. escapes. There were a couple of misses here, so the Talisman actually doing work already. Sick game. The Lich there again was feeling bloodthirsty, but uh, this counter surround was threatened by Vortex. These two playing a wonderful Undead Mirror against each other. Super fun to see. Very different from the stable, slow, um, you know, monotone Fiend Mirror with DK that we saw earlier against Wan. This one is much more wild. And yeah, Vortex was under a lot of pressure, but the Crypt Lord survived. And looking at the experience, Vortex has way higher levels. That is one level ahead indeed, but the Lumber is horrible. He used the ghouls for creeping. A couple of them died. He still was able to tech to tier 3. And he needs something. He needs some sort of tech because X Lord is going for Garks now. But oh, hold that thought. He's threatening us around. There is a staff, of course, but then a surround by Vortex. And that's so important because if he's trying to staff out now, there can be an impale. X Lord trying to fight out for a second, but gives up the thought now and sacrifices his TP for his life. Very nicely done there by Vortex. Not easy to get that vanilla surround with the uh, ghouls Please that are not so fast without the aura. Aura, though, will soon be coming in. DK now out and soon to be leveling as well. And Vortex on his way to tier 3, whereas X Lord, he's spamming Gargs on tier 2, which is a recipe for getting outscaled sooner rather than later. It's also a recipe for destruction early on if nothing can attack you, because this army of Vortex, not a single unit can attack these Gargs, but damage must be done. And usually Gargs are the best one that can cancel expansions or attack oh, workers please. down the line, but nothing. It's really possible here. Maybe he goes for the Drakes, but that would be a very expensive investment just for creeping. Red Camp being attempted here quite early. That is one of the strengths of the Crypt Lord. You reach level 3, you get the level 2 Beetles, and suddenly there's almost no camp you can't creep. The Red Camp probably not at the fountain, but this one by pulling out the Ogre Lord does certainly work. x is not adding a second hero, by the way. He's playing Lich solo with Gargoyles. Okay. Should, could result in a high level Lich, but Aura is missing, Crowd Control is missing, Disable is missing. But another surround here, Impale trying to fight out, and with the coil that's of course very helpful. Can't close that surround anymore, so the Crypt Lord is safe. Is x -Lord a little too stubborn trying to go for the hero the third time in a row? I think it's the biggest, you know, upside play he had there. The other possibility is killing beetles or skeletons, so eh, may as well try to force that TP. But 
Crypto fights out. However, now we have some fiends starting to come out, and Web is already researched. So the hard counter towards the gargoyles is coming, but slowly. We have a single fiend at the moment. We have like eight gargs or so already, and of course, with those, that drag is going to disappear in two and a half seconds, and boom, that's level, that's level three. Exlord with the magic tricks, he can make dragons disappear. Got the Rune Bracers, that can be decent, especially the higher level the Crypt Lord is and the Impale gets, and of course uh, Nova might hit there as well. It's not an aura that uh, benefits everything, it's not Robo of the Magi or something where you get constant damage. The best thing would be, of course, take your hero out, but also reduce the number of fiends would make these guards a lot uh, better in the long run. It feels like Exor is really missing those boots of speed. If you're playing Lich solo, it seems like you really should go for the boots. Earlier you had to decide between boots and staff. He went for the staff. Didn't get that much value out of it, really. It's great for teleporting somewhere else on the map, but if you're constantly kiting and moving back and forth and uh, in these battles, then definitely the boots are better. But anyways, he doesn't have those. He also doesn't have the aura. Not yet anyways. We finally have the DK coming in now for Exor. We have the tier 3 coming. But it all seems a little late. Yeah, tend to agree. There's only one web at the time, though, so there is damage to be done. Oh, Nova, right clicks, DK. Can you save him somehow? Oh, counter Nova! The Gargs come in, the DK. Who so close. Can they reach somehow? The Lich is chasing that his brother, basically. Another Nova. There might be an impel in a second orb of corruption doing the work. Can he reach? Does he have the mana? It's so close. Vortex, this would be a major kill, but he has to let go! On the other side, the DK still being attacked and the Gargs get the pickup. Ooh, that Lich almost died. The Bru Rain Bru <laughs> Rune Bracers Brain save him. <laughs> and Exord never was missing Boots of Speed so badly in his life. It might still be worth to go for them, but it's a weird state in the game. Exord also wants to get a stronger army, more Gargoyles and soon-to-be statues joining. But Vortex is getting stronger by the minute. That shade, however, always trailing him. This brings me back to EPS days of 2008, where Axel was already using the shade. Rarely seen nowadays, but here we see it again. Those were also the days where Axel was camping in his base for 15 minutes. I love these games, but this will probably not happen here. Again, the magic trick, Robe of the Magi, that is constant damage. That's a little bit more mana. And of course, experience. Can he outlevel the DK right away with the first creep spot? Might not be the case, but we're getting dangerously close to a level 4 Lich. <laughs> you know what that means, Neil. <laughs> That's for <laughs> intelligence, baby! Hells yeah. And also level 2 Dark Ritual, which is really good for mana sustain for the Lich. Big level up here, he's gonna get an orb soon as well. And level 2 DK for the aura. This was big level ups for Vortex, uh, for Exor, excuse me. Definitely, no question about that. And Vortex finally comes to finish the job of creeping the lab that he did earlier. Level 2 DK, just barely. I thought perhaps that wasn't going to be good enough, but he gets it. And now with a formidable fiend army as well. Four fiends out already. Exdorch still only gargoyles. Perhaps not the best army for straight up fighting, but certainly very good for run buys into the economy. It is ghoul frenzy time. Can he get the uh, creep check? Not yet. He's going for the base. Nova. Dark attacks, and just like against Wan, he just wants Vortex off of the map, buy more time to let his tier 3 unfold as well, because he didn't have an orb yet, there was no upgrades, no big upgrades really, and no third hero, so not his time to fight for sure. A little bit uh, of resources drained from Vortex, and Vortex didn't get the item or sold it already. I think he sold it then, right? Yeah. He got the Cloak of Flames, which ah. uh, in this kind of game is definitely useless. Is Exod maybe gonna go Frostworms? This is the old school, old school way of playing Undead. Again, you know, uh, Gargs against Fiends. Going Gargs first and then Frostworms later to have slow down to kill off more of those Fiends. And the thing is, Worms cannot be impaled, just like Gargs can't. Yeah, but well, they can That's... be webbed and focused. They can. Yeah. But depending on how qu uh, quickly the fiends die, maybe it's not going to work out so easily. But yeah, Exor, it still seems like he's in a rough spot. It seems like he still can't fight and can't fight for a long time. He has to play evasive, he has to play guerrilla warfare, and here is the little hit squad, the Gargs flying into the main. Pretty cool! This will at least force a couple of Acolytes, reduce mining time, maybe even force a tower, maybe even force a Vortex retreat, but... Vortex doesn't seem irritated at all. He's just 
rebuilding these echoes, stays on the map, soaks up the experience on the bottom right hand side of the map, gets a pendant of energy, wonderful as we know. That's another impale for him. Yeah, and now he wants to go for the counterattack. Vortex also going to assault the enemy main base, and his army Clear. seems a lot scarier yeah. than the opponents. More gargoyles coming out. Exort close now to going into upkeep. Oh, Exort getting surrounded on his DK. Uh oh, miss movement on his second hero, and this DK is going to die unless he TPs out of there. Probably still stuck between the beetles, buying the TP now, trying to reposition. And Exort notices this is a scary army. It's an invite for an impale! Hello, there we go. For the DK once again, Vortex really wants to close this out now. Is there a way to get him? Uh, Staff doesn't work! It was a little bit too late in the damage, just a little bit too much. And all of a sudden, Vortex is playing his advantage to the fullest and is raiding Exxon's base. That one tower doesn't look like it's going to be able to stop Vortex. His Cryptoid looking really good now, and it seems like he learned his lesson. It seems like he learned against Lich he has to tech instead of expand. That's looking a lot better now. Gargoyles are coming in, though can they turn the tides? Exploit without gold, without a DK, it's looking very rough indeed. How good are these Gargoyles going to be? Nova's coming in from the German's first hero, level 5 on the Lich. Okay, that's a strong Nova, but so many Gargs are going down. All the units are just disappearing. Exploit's Lich for the time being is being left alone. No, not much more mana on the DK for Vortex. He's also losing quite a few units, but it seems like these heroes for Vortex will always survive. Scroll the Beast coming in now. At the end of this fight, is taking out more and more Gargoyles. Vortex got so much experience here. He's got four, three, three heroes now. Oh, this try hero combo is so strong, so much stronger than x -Lords. Both are pretty much without army. It's just a combined 47 supply. It's mostly heroes. But yeah, how do you rebuild now, Exlord? The DK is gone, still needs some time, can't coil the Lich, gotta be careful. What's the play? What's the way out? Or is the only way out of game three? Yeah, Lich is like the gate... He's like the gatekeeper there, right? He's like, brother, no, no, no. Uh, I uh, still have a job to do here, so please leave me alone. Is the DK gonna make it out? It doesn't look like it. It's a lot of damage coming in from Vortex's army. The altar will be destroyed. Exxon has to go now for a Tavern Revive, but he's so low on gold. He lost so many Gargoyles earlier. Gar uh, Acolytes, I mean. Acolytes, which he's remaking right now. We see only one in the mine at the moment, but even this Black Citadel is close to falling. The Beatles with the normal damage doing a great job in the space attack. And Exlord is down to 18 supply. The Black Citadel is being repaired. There's still a little bit of gold. No expansions, of course. Nova exchange, possibly. The statue is healing Exlord, but that was enough. Vortex lives! Brings us to a third map. We've been seeing a lot of 2-0s in these regional finals, but now we're gonna come to one final map to decide it, and that one is gonna be Last Refuge. So Exlord tries it with a happy special, goes for the Lich, and this time Vortex doesn't get caught off guard. I think Todd put it very nicely earlier, when you play against such a surprising strategy for the first time, it feels almost like a in a panic sometimes, like a deer in the headlights. You don't know what you're supposed to do, you've never seen it before. It feels very overwhelming. You try to stick to your game plan, but your game plan is what that strategy is designed against, against the fast expansion. So Vortex shifts gears, goes for a tech, and that looks way better. Exlord, I think there was also a lot of improvisation in that by him. That Lich, he didn't play too much before and looked a little weird at times. He was on tier 2 for a long time. He was just spamming gargoyles. He didn't add in a DK for a long, long time as well. And if you play this style into the mid game where the opponent is tacking, I think you really, really need those boots. He never got him. He almost died for it. Didn't quite with the Lich, but would die in the end after all. Maybe one was right from the beginning. Maybe this Lich only works if the opponent is so stubborn and keeps on going for that expansion. Harry will take a breath. It's all good, mate. First map showed us what Exlord learned from his first series against Vortex. Second map showed us but what Vortex learned from his match against Happy. So now we all boil down what we all learned. And this is the final exam in the lower bracket final now. This is one map for the final four, which will be played, of course, tomorrow at the grand final on Championship Sunday. Happy and Hawk are waiting there already. 
the winner of the next map is gonna join will be an undead versus human hawk is getting super excited for that already and i don't know the map is last refuge and this was the ultimate disaster map for exot versus vortex it was also the ultimate disaster map for vortex versus happy so what do you do now yeah a lot of questions up in the air i think Exxon might go with a DK, but we may take a moment here before we get into it. We have a speed session with a few player interviews, which we're going to take a look at first. The games will be played from home instead of a stage. Is this good or bad for you? Personally, I think playing from home instead of on a stage is better for me because I get to play on my own setup. So. Everything's gonna be a lot more comfortable. I'm gonna be able to just focus on the game. It's 50-50. Uh, bad for me because I'm usually better offline. 단점. 저는 외국 가는 걸 좋아해서 단점이라고 생각합니다. 그 경기장에서 느낄 수 있는 긴장과 그런 설렘 떨림이 집에서는 없기 때문에 어 저에게는 단점이라고 생각합니다. 몇 선수는 좋아할 수도 있겠지만 저는 장점입니다. 저한테는 장점이기도 하고 단점이기도 합니다. Uh, it's probably better for me. I'd rather play from home than on a LAN event, honestly. I prefer to play on stage because it's <clears throat> real emotions and I play more comfortable when I play on stage. How important is this tournament, especially compared to WCG and WGL? Uh, WCG and WGL I think it's the same as WCG and WGL. I think it's the same as WCG and WGL. 동급이라고 생각합니다. 건 굉장히 중요하다고 생각해요. 어, 일단 뭐 보통 WGL이나 이제 WCG는 보통 이제 아시아 아시아권 대회라서 일단 아시아에서 가장 규모가 큰 대회인데 ESL은 또 이제 유럽권에서 이제 가장 큰 대회이기 때문에 좀 똑같다고 봅니다. 똑같이 중요한 대회라고 생각합니다. Who was your best opponent during these three seasons? My best opponent during the three seasons has to be Cruncher. He's the one who made it into the finals all three times. So it's just going to be another rematch the fourth time and the result's not going to be any different this time around. Uh, definitely Hitman. We've had a uh, pretty close series. He came out top, but this time obviously I'll come out of top. 저는 그세 시즌보다 어, 미국에서 했던 예, 그 오프라인을 진행했던 그 대회가 기억이 나고 어, 어, 결승 상대인 포커스 선수와의 경기가 기억납니다. 문이었던 것 같습니다. 임피랑 문이 두 선수라고 생각합니다. 제일 어렸던 상대는 저는 로라이어 선수입니다. Uh, my best opponent. Uh was happy because he's a super skilled player. It's hard to beat him. Foggy and happy. The best opponent must have been happy. There's a rivalry between China and Korea. Who do you think has the upper hand at the moment? 그래도 요즘엔 요 근래는 조금 이제 한국 선수들이 좀더 더 기세가 좋은 것 같은데 또 이제 중국 선수들이 또 이제 대회를 요즘에 좀 참가를 안 했는데 또 참가하면은 또 어, 모르겠습니다. 아마 그 중국 선수들이 또 이제 큰 대회 같은 데서 강해가지고. 좀 이번에 봐야 될것 같습니다. Korea players uh, do really hard uh, work, but Chinese are also very strong, so hard to say. Korea, of course. 현재는 중국이 앞서고 있는 것 같습니다. 어 최근에는 중국이 조금 더 기세가 좋다고 생각을 합니다. 비슷하다고 생각합니다. Uh, it's hard to say. It goes back and forth. I think overall, China does with Infi usually winning the big tournaments. They've both got a lot of strong players. I think Korea. With Moon and Lolai pretty strong, and also yeah, a bunch of others uh, like Sok. Ladies and gentlemen, Game 3, Exxon versus Vortex, an entire year might be boiling down to this very map, especially for the loser of this map, because he's out. They're already in the fallback net, and uh, they don't want to fall any deeper. What's going to happen now? So many question marks and a couple of answers. Hawk's opponent will be determined on Last Refuge. It's been a fun best of three so far between these two, with different styles, with different timings. Vortex, of course, stuck to his Crypt Lord, and we have no reason to think that he's going to do anything else. But what's X Lord going to do? We saw a Crypt Lord, we saw Lich. Is it going to be time for a DK now? It's not looking like it with his ghoul opening. Okay, the answers are in the altar. Crypt Lord for X Lord, Crypt Lord for Vortex. Will game one repeat? We will see a little craziness. So Vortex 
is he now happy that he doesn't see a lid? I, I don't know, man. This, this is so unpredictable. Yeah, I think we notice here that these two are definitely very evenly matched. Their first match was pretty one-sided, going Vortex's way, but as Vortex noticed, and I think many of us, it wasn't x -Lord's very best day, but today they seem to be much more on even keel. And now, perhaps we're going to, for the first time, be seeing a Cryptlord Expo for both in the early game. That is what we're expecting here, unless Vortex again is going to try it with that level 2 creep route into aggression. On Northern Isles, it's understandable, with a Toscar camp, but here it seems very unlikely. There's no good creep route to go for. So yeah, two base, two base seems to be in the cards. Yeah, the Tusker camp supports you with a big consumable, so that's even better. Here, you're right, there's no real way. And here it might be more about who is the early aggressor after they've crept their own expansions. Interesting also here, by the way, Vortex always goes for the early Acolyte, which slightly, slightly slows down the ghoul production. X-Lord is not going for it. He's not scouting with the Acolyte. He's not interested in what exactly his opponent's creep route is. So X-Lord goes for the small green before expansion. We'll go over there then. Vortex going for the Expo creep instantly, which is not quite level 2, but almost. He's only going to need one beetle or skeleton to have enough then. And yet the Expo timings are, of course, crucial or probably more importantly, first the ziggurat into a narrow tool. Yeah, this is of course the benefit of having a bigger toolbox, a bigger variety of strategies as x does. That could have been a DK, could have been a Crypt Lord, could have been a Lich, whatever. So Vortex has to scout. Vortex is a little one-dimensional in this mirror matchup, so that would have been a huge curveball, but also probably not his best play if he moves away from Crypt Lord. So uh, all the uh, extra practice of different strategies is paying off right now for Lord. Creep route commences, and I think we're seeing a little bit more mastery of the Crypt Lord on Vortex's side. His mana management looking a little bit better. He still has more impales to use, one at the moment, perhaps two later on. And he's sending out a ghoul hit squad to go for a counter attack and an expo cancel, but we can see X Lord is not expanding. Did he go for a second crypt? I don't think he did. So this is uh, quite the interesting style from the German. Who wanted to surround here was Vortex. I mean, we can expect these hit squads on the right-hand side of the map. That's what you probably always do. But that opens up the base. x once again with a tally staff, trying to defend his home base. Double narrow, no double crypt. It is Impale, looks like a little better for Vortex when we look at HP and mana. Unwilling to use any Impales yet because of course he wants to summon more Beetles. That is an Acolyte going down and that's also a surround for Axlord, who after the Tally Staff has to go for a Town Portal. There's no Tier 2 tech of course, so there's no potions. Damage done already and time bought for the expansion, but the expansion is under assault. And this is the wild chaos of Cryptlord Mirror. It can get so weird with economy attacks. Another Impale. Level 3 also for Exor in the meantime. He now has level 2 Beetles to make use of, which would be wonderful, but he can't get to the corpses right now. Also, he's really low mana. In the meantime, there's also action happening in Vortex space. What's going on there? A complete exodus of the Acolytes. Lots of kills. They are going x way, but also Ghouls now very hurt. Ghouls which could be falling. And, importantly, the top left expansion has not been cancelled. Okay, maybe there was damage done. We will check that after the dust has settled in the main base. Wild brawls. Well, it's very, very hurt, but you're right. Not cancelled at all. We could have uh, seen it from the silhouette there. There was no Acolyte anymore, if I saw this correctly. But it's one base, one base, but it's two base, one base. Well, mining still from the main. Exile was bringing some units back south from the enemy natural. I wonder if he had left those there, might that have been enough for the cancel? Hard to tell. Exile now healing up. That ritual dagger actually valuable. Supply is dead even. What's the mana count saying? Looking a little bit better for Vortex. And of course, now both TPs are gone, so you gotta be double careful about those surrounds. Okay, here we go. Both are level 3. What's left in the tank? x has no Ziggurat to go above 30 supply. He has a couple of ghouls in the main. He has a couple of ghouls here on the left-hand side. Trying to go for a surround. This is the exact position where x was surrounded in the winner bracket semi-final. Not happening to Vortex here. History doesn't repeat the other way around. And there a break here. Okay, tense moments. Every misstep 
might cost the player the game. Eklund in a bad spot here. He's fighting up against the expansion. He just lost two ghouls there on the chase, trying to force that impale surround and kill on the enemy Crypt Lord. It didn't work. That almost looked like a Hail Mary play. And this is what I was talking about earlier. Maybe Vortex nowadays feeling more comfortable with the Crypt Lord, having better responses to enemy creep routes. He knew, thanks to his scouting, that X Lord took a little while longer to creep his natural and expand there. In fact, X Lord didn't turn out to be expanding there at all. And then the powerful counterattack into the main by Vortex did tremendous damage. And now X Lord on the back foot. His only advantage currently is he has a little more mana on his Crypt Lord. Things should be resolved here in a moment. Well, if I look at x if I look at his uh, gestures, it doesn't look that way. Uh, he's shaking the mouse there, I guess. Did something break, maybe? <sighs> oh, oh, oh. oh I, know that, I know that face. They're not happy with what's happening, and uh, something in conversation is... Uh, well, there's some conflict, let's put it that way. We don't know exactly what it is. Always very unfortunate when we're in this kind of situation where some kind of technical issue may have occurred. Yeah, hard to say what's up now and hopefully we can resolve this. <sighs> this is such a stressful moment. Both, of course, very experienced in big tournaments. Not only Warcraft, also Starcraft. In the case of Vortex, also Heroes of the Storm. We saw a lot of this uh, multitasking, a lot of multi-screen action here. Of course, uh, the Starcraft career comes handy in the Crypt Lord Ghoul split meta that we have sometimes now. Yeah, Exxon having been a Starcraft player himself, but not with the same level of success that Vortex had. He definitely was a step ahead there. But x -Lord, you know, he was I, he was perhaps the first player in Europe to really bring the Crypt Lord to the main stage. Him and TGW uh, come to mind back when the Crypt Lord first emerged, who really brought him to the highest level. And Vortex has been one of the most faithful players and fans of the Crypt Lord. As we said, we only expect him to, to, play, to be playing Crypt Lord in these Undead Mirrors. And he has stayed faithful to that. As we're hoping to resolve this in a moment, guys. Still, there's uh, some t debate to be had, but hopefully, we're gonna get it rolling here soon. At the moment, it's looking rough for X Lord, and that can play a factor here in this weird uh, pause. A bit of frustration certainly boiling up for the German. Sure. Uh, is he gonna be influenced by that? Usually, he's the one to trigger the other. Now he finds himself in the same boat. Vortex was only eliminated by Happy, by the way, in the entire Dreamhack circuit that we had in 2020. That was the case for Exxon until the winter season, when all of a sudden there was Krav, also, of course, a fellow Crypt Lord player, and he pretty much didn't stand a chance in the quarterfinal with a 3 uh, 1 2 3 there. So, this grand final, this regional grand final, could be a little bit of a passing of the Torch from X Lord to Vortex and Crow. Absolutely. This is the match for the moving into the playoffs. Hawk is waiting. Who does Hawk has have on his list right now? Who is he pressing his thumbs for? Hard to make a choice. Nobody in this group. <laughs> I think like it's only tough nuts to crack. Uh, Honestly, but against Vortex, he did really well, right? He was able to hold on well against the Vortex aggression. Thinking back to those games, lots of ghouls and gargs. Their hawk did really well. X Lord would be harder to predict. But he for different playstyles. He defeated. X Lord as well in group stages before. He defeated pretty much every undead in Europe, with the exception, of course, as always, of Happy. Um, and I think that overshadows a little how good Hawk is against Undead when we only look at the results of him versus Happy. So even though on paper it might look uh, favorable for Undeads against him, might not be the case. Yeah, Hawk is the last bastion standing, the last beacon of hope, right? It was Blade also, who a lot of humans had hope for, but Blade was eliminated 2-0 by Krav. Wasn't able to get the victory there as he did before, and not with a perfect play. It may be a rehost here, we're not quite sure. The players are in talks with the admins, maybe a bug occurred, I think we're gonna get filled in on that soon. That would, of course, be 
devastating for Vortex. Uh, I imagine if that's the call, he can't be happy with that. It seemed like he was in a marvelous position there on map three. I'm not sure if, yeah, I, yeah, I have no idea what's up. Um, I know that feel though, <laughs> a little bit of a bug at a DreamHack stage, right? Feels familiar, um, but okay. The admins, thank God we're no admins, man. That is a tough, tough, tough job right now. We will have a solution. Yeah, a, a rehost, would that trigger Vortex? Would that be good for X-Lord? A lot of stress between everyone right now. Yeah, okay, so now we're given the information. So x is claiming that a bug occurred with, ironically, his Crypt Lord, the bug <laughs> himself, uh, where he couldn't control him anymore. And now the question is if uh, a regame is given. Hard position for the admins especially. This is the moments where you certainly don't envy their work. In the meantime, by the way, of course, we have this wonderful uh, tournament here. We also have a very cool update from W3C. You can check that out, of course, on our socials, for example, on Back to Warcraft. This is where you're supposed to play Warcraft 3. And also, if you are watching this stream and think, oh, uh, a little bit of progress. All right, seems like the bug was temporary, and the game may continue. After a hard dropping moment, maybe now we're back and ready. We won't need a regame here as it seems. The match continues, and Vortex will be able to continue playing with his lead. Okay, I uh, would love to know what exactly was up there, but we will probably uh, never know or later in an, in an interview. Here we go, more pressure by Axel. Vortex has to hold. He's still the one with the two bases. He's still the one in control of this game so far. Axel is still waiting for the Ziggurat to put on more pressure. He's still not attacking. He's going for a graveyard now, and I really wonder what he's supposed to do, but there's a lot of beetles going for the haunt to don't mind now. It might be enough damage to force the kill. It's only two Acolytes repairing. It's not that much repair. It might just be enough, though. Some of the Beatles now starting to get taken out. The Vortex, Crypt Lord, returns to the expansion to try to save it. Okay. Exhort summoning a few more Beatles. He's got a lot of units up here. This Haunted gold mine dropping so low, but not falling. Not yet. Not yet. There's the ghouls, there's the Cryptlord, there's no Impale to stop these attacks. Axlord brute forcing the second base, it was so expensive and barely any reward. Vortex once again trying to go further surround with the help of a narrow tower. Axlord slowed down but not surrounded and the base goes down, oh my god! What a comeback here! But now he has to evacuate his forces, he has no TP anymore. How many ghouls can stay alive or is he even willing to evacuate? Is he just willing to continue brawling? It's like a battle between two ant colonies. It's so many small <laughs> units over here fighting against each other. Insects are at war. No impales being used. Exlord and Vortex both lost their TP, so you have to be very careful with the first hero. But Exlord has that safety tele staff. Vortex doesn't, so he has to be doubly careful. Exlord, in the meantime, gets up a graveyard. At least he did a second ago. Yeah. I don't know if it finished already. I think it did. And he's also going for another acolyte. But here's an impale by Vortex. How much damage can that do? Not too sure. The graveyard did finish. The ghoul falls. And Exor doesn't have the forces anymore because that one Ziggurat was so late. And Vortex wants to round after the next the Spaniard coming back with vengeance. Yeah, I got a lot of ghoul kills right there in that sequence over those two minutes or so. He killed like four ghouls, and that's a big deal if both are just spamming ghouls endlessly. Oh, speaking of which, we have another big gang coming out from the main. Vortex 40 Supply, the Spaniard still in charge. x setting up towers at the expansion, but no actual haunted yet. x in fact, with more than 500 gold, not spending it, well, because of that supply block he had. Well, he had it earlier. He could actually make units right now. Yeah, that is still a 10 supply advantage. So Exor is probably trying to uh, prevent a Vortex from pushing his base. He's still distracting, trying to keep Vortex back. Both are on tier one. This game is almost 10 minutes old. We didn't tech, we just massed. Exor was trying to send his own ghoul gang up there to get the cancel on the enemy expansion. That did not work. Expansion comes up and should be finished for Vortex. In a few seconds, maybe 20 seconds or so, Exlord only starting with his own Haunted. Now, another disadvantage for Exlord, but not unwinnable yet, I suppose. He's got towers coming up at the expansion. 
and Vortex. Time is slipping away for him to find the cancel. Okay, he's building an altar and a crypt. Interesting, building the altar now. With those two scrolls, he's going to be very strong with his ghoul attack. Exlord doesn't have the same numbers and certainly doesn't have the scroll. He has the towers though. Static defense might help him. But for how long? He needs to buy time to be on even footing once again. Acolytes will be moving over. Both ghoul ganks again meeting. Both Crypt Lords full mana. But Vortex so close to level 4. He wants to get that level 4. Exlord knows it! Exlord knows how close his opponent is to 4. But he mistimes the impale. Not that is now out. Vortex with a lot of advantages. Okay, Exod has to fight in the shadows of the towers. Not only one as before, but as Lord of the Rings told us, Remo, you need two towers. Exod got that. You educated him well. Like Exod is bringing all the ghouls from the main. So this again is going to be a lot of ghoulios fighting against each other. But Vortex, he's unsure if he actually wants to commit. He saw the towers and maybe he's going to change his mind. He's starting his tech now. And getting his own graveyard, so Exlord not forced into a battle yet. But Exlord also feeling a little suspicious. What's Vortex oh, doing? Why is he not attacking? Was just attack. reaching around, Remo. Not retreating, just finding another angle. Crypt Lord is at the shop, buys a potion of himself. He still has that staff. And Mana is looking good, looking a little better for Exlord, actually. These engagements. Is there going to be free damage for Vortex to be done? Exlord lures him away from the main base. They're continuing to dance. They're continuing to taunt each other. When is the big explosion? Vortex threatens an attack, trying to get rid of the production building that Exlord will need throughout the entire game. So he has to engage now. Oh, getting impaled very early, getting surrounded very early. The staff is probably on cooldown. Yep, for a minute he has to fight out there. There's no TP, there's no potion. There's nothing. There's only a scroll and Vortex. Just right click, right click, right click at the kill. Exo with a big mistake, wasn't looking at his first hero, just like Blade was earlier. He gets surrounded and now in big trouble. He can go for a Tavern Revive, but that is going to be very expensive for the level 3 hero. And it's going to have only half HP and no mana. Vortex still looking very strong here. Of course, this is no all-in attack, really. He is teching up behind this. Oh. Another wonderful Impale takes out one more Ghoul, doing a lot of damage oh, to plenty more. The Crypto right. comes back from the middle. Is he going to have to go for a heal scroll here again? Maybe. Trying to go for his own surround. Oh, he has an opportunity perhaps to kill the enemy Crypt Lord right here, but Vortex making it hard to close that surround and just so many Ooh. units for the Spaniard. He can just take this fight now. 60 supply tier 1 ghouls and it's just more and more and more with a double crypt. Exlord on his left flag. Now he's about to be eliminated from the tournament if he's not getting that kill, but it's looking okay. Level 5 on the Crypt Lord. How powerful can his might still be matched? He's in circle. He's sturdy. He has no TP and no life as Exlord tall portals out and gets level 4. Madness on Last Refuge. There's a lot of ghouls back there, which are going to die as well. At least two. No, three actually, but there's so many more ghouls. Attack upgrade coming in for Vortex as well. His tier two is finished. He's going for the Crypt Lord. A DK seems like a great idea for Coils and Aura. Exlord also with his tier two finished, but I don't think he has an altar here, Exlord does. So no second hero for him. And Vortex still with a big supply. 30 or 25 supply lead now. Acolyte's moving and he's creeping. He wants to catch up on that level 5. Of course, huge lead still in supply, in experience and in total income for Vortex, the Spanish champion. He's flooding another base and this time it's the expansion. The two towers were a problem but the supply was 50 or 40. Not the case anymore. Exlord trying to repair, trying to find a good angle. It's the one of the wind, Exlord. You need some magic here. Exo's not producing. Perhaps he hasn't grouped the crypt from the expansion yet. He's not oh. making any ghouls right there. Oh. Lost the crypt in the main. Now he's starting to make those ghouls, but now it might be too late. Both towers will be going down. Too much normal damage. Level 3 beetles. So much DPS and HP. And it seems like Exo is about to lose this natural, this expansion. And if he loses this base, this should be curtains for him. Vortex still on the warpath. We do have a mana potion now, though. Huge potential upside for Impale for Exlord. Yeah, there is a staff also to get out of surrounds if he's, he's the one getting surrounded. One more time. Trying to be bought. But okay, Vortex 
One squad is going for the Haunted. Needs an impale here. It's, of course, only quote-unquote level two. He has to get that squad. But then there's another squad, and there's very limited mana, even though we have a potion here on x -Lord's side. First set of the one of the wind. Ho oh, ho! The ghouls say hello to us casters and the viewers at home. And that might just be a multi-kill if he stops them from retreating. Level 5 now for Exo. The next Impale is gonna do insane damage, but there's just so many ghouls. Impale is ready. He can line it up perfectly, but it's not enough. GG called. Exo will lose this map. The win goes to Vortex.